This is Mr. Martin. These are uh, video notes for section 5.5. This is for pre-calculus honors. Uh, in this video we're going to be talking about uh, some more formulas, um, identity formulas. We're going to be looking at the double angle formulas. So when we say double angle you can see here we're talking about uh, sine of times theta. So we're doubling theta. That's double angle formula. And um, we've got a couple of these written in here already. And we're going to derive some of these too, but we can see that the sine of 2 theta uh, is um, the same as 2 sine theta cosine theta. So that's a, a double angle formula that we'll uh, verify momentarily. And then cosine 2 theta, you see there's three different um, lines here for cosine 2 theta. I've got the first one here that looks a little bit like the Pythagorean identity except that it's minus. So it's cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Uh, so that's a little bit different. And then we're going to use our Pythagorean identity to come up with two other versions of the cosine double angle formulas. And when you're working with the cosine double angle formula, you'll want to use the one that's most convenient for you. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit as well. So uh, before we go ahead and uh, fill in these other two blanks here, let's uh, derive the double angle uh, formula for sine and cosine. So let's start with cosine. So we've got cosine of 2 theta, and I'm going to split this into cosine of theta plus theta. And we can see here we have a sum of theta and theta, and we just learned about the sum formula, sum and difference formulas. So if I use my sum formula to expand this, I would get cosine theta, cosine theta, because normally it would be cosine alpha times cosine beta, and then minus, and then sine theta times sine theta. Again, normally if these angles are different, we'd have sine alpha, sine beta, or whatever the two variables were. And then if we do a little simplifying here, we get cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, so we've uh, derived the double angle formula for cosine. In a similar process, we can derive the double angle formula for sine. So we would have sine theta plus theta. Again, using our uh, sum formula for sine, we'd have sine theta cosine theta plus cosine theta sine theta and these are like terms so I can just combine those to get 2 sine theta cosine theta okay so just real quick derivations that I would expect you to be able to do on your own um, so if you have any questions about those, make sure that you ask me. Uh, part B here, we want to uh, come up with the other two versions of the double angle formula for cosine. So we've already got that cosine 2 theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. And we're going to use a process that we have done uh, before when we were verifying identities. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to rearrange it. So I'm going to rearrange it into two separate forms. So if I move the sine squared over, I would get cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Or I could move the cosine squared over and get that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. And then what I'm going to do to get my two other versions is I'm going to substitute for each of these individually into the double angle formula that we have already that we just verified for cosine 2 theta. So first I'm going to have cosine 2 theta is equal to, so I'm going to substitute out for cosine squared theta. So that's going to be 1 minus sine squared theta and then minus our other sine squared theta from up here. And if I combine like terms here, I get 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So this would be 
another version for us. So let's go back up here and fill that in. I've got 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Pause as needed. And then let's get the other one. So I've got cosine of 2 theta. Now I'm going to substitute in for cosine squared theta. So cosine squared is 1 minus, I'm sorry, we're going to substitute in for sine squared. So I've got cosine squared theta minus, and sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared theta. Again, if I distribute that negative and combine like terms, I get 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And we can go back up here and fill that in. 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Okay, so there we've got the double angle formula for uh, sine 2 theta and then our three different versions for cosine 2 theta. And again, keep in mind this first one has cosine and sine in it. But these other two, they only have a single trig function. So if you're working on a problem and you already know the sine and you need to find the cosine of 2 theta, this would be the most convenient one to use because you don't need to do any additional work. You just need to substitute it and solve. So keep that in mind when you're using these formulas. Use the one that's most convenient. All right, let's move on to some examples. So we want to find the exact values using double angle formulas. So I've got sine of theta is equal to 3 fifths. And this part here tells me that we're between 0 and pi over 2. So we're in the first quadrant. Really get used to drawing these triangles in the correct quadrant and then labeling them. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So here's my theta. My opposite side is 3, my hypotenuse is 5, which means that my adjacent side is going to be 4. And we're looking for the sine of 2 theta. So using our double angle formula, the sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So that's 2 times the sine of theta we were given is 3 fifths and the cosine of theta we can use our triangle that's adjacent over hypotenuse so 4 over 5 and we go ahead and simplify this to get 24 20 fifths. Alright let's go ahead and find the cosine of 2 theta again we've got three different formulas to use for cosine 2 theta since I was given the sine of theta is 3 fifths, I'm going to use the formula that only uses sine. That way I don't have to worry about making any silly mistakes, or if I did make a mistake, it wouldn't carry through with the rest of my work. So I'm going to use 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So that's 1 minus 2 times the sine was 3 fifths, so that's 3 fifths squared, which is going to be 1 minus 2 times 9 twenty fifths, which we'll bring this up here is going to be 1 minus 18 twenty fifths. So 1 is uh, 25 twenty fifths minus 18 twenty fifths or 7 twenty fifths. Again, pause as needed. Uh, if you have questions, make sure you write those down and ask me the next time you see me. All right, let's move on to another example. So now we've got that x is between pi and 3 pi over 2. So we're in the third quadrant, and we're given that cosine of x is equal to negative 24 over 25. We want to find the sine of 2x and the cosine of 2x. So we'll start with that. So let's look at our triangle here in the third quadrant. And the cosine is negative 24 over 25. This is a Pythagorean triple, or you can just use the Pythagorean theorem. So I know that our opposite side has to be negative 7. Again, we're in the third quadrant. So I know that 
uh, my X and Y are both negative, so make sure you label those accordingly. So now if I move on to find the sine of 2X, that's going to be 2 sine X cosine X. So that's 2 times the sine of X is going to be negative 7 over 25. And the cosine of X was given, that's negative 24 over 25. And if I simplify all this, I'm going to get 336 over 625. All right, if you uh, want to pause the video and see if you can figure out the uh, cosine of 2x, and then when you start the video, the solution for that part will be up there. You can compare. Uh, go ahead and do that, or just wait, and the solution will pop right up. So uh, if you're going to pause, pause now. All right, so uh, the answer for the other part uh, is uh, 527 over 625. Uh, I chose to use this version of the double angle formula for cosine because I was given the cosine up here, and I don't have to worry about uh, any uh, calculation mistakes that I might have made. I'm just using a problem that was given to us. So uh, again, if you have questions, make sure you ask. And let's move on to example three. Um, we want to derive the formula for the tangent of two theta in terms of tangent theta. And again, if you uh, want to pause the video and try and work this out on your own, I would just have you start with tangent of theta plus theta. And then use our uh, sum formula for tangent to help us derive this. Um, so again, if you want to pause the video and see if you can work this out. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and work this through. So using our uh, sum and difference formulas, the sum formula for tangent, we would have tangent alpha plus tangent beta. So it's our alpha and beta are both the same here. So tan theta plus tan theta all over 1 minus, and then we'd have tan alpha times tan beta, so it's just tan theta times tan theta again. And then if we do a little bit of simplifying, uh, combine like terms in the numerator, I have 2 tan theta. And a little simplifying in the bottom, I have 1 minus tan squared theta. So we get that the double angle formula for 2 tangent 2 theta is going to be 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. So one more double angle formula for us. Okay, let's go on to one more thing before we finish up here. Um, actually, I'm going to uh, just leave this up to you. Here's our power reducing formulas. And uh, what I want you to see if you could do it is to uh, derive uh, the sine squared theta identity. So see if you can derive this. Um, and we'll talk about that next time uh, I see you in class. Make sure, again, that you've uh, written down any questions that you have and uh, ask me next time you see me.